Hi, it's Dwyer. It is Christmas Day. Happy holidays, everyone. I hope Santa or Amazon or Auntie Keisha delivered for you with the gifts. Let's talk about boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion sure. from a complete stranger online. Obviously, I'm getting roughed up here in the background by Amazon. Give me one moment. All right. You know, boxing is really lucky. Just like hip hop back in the day for men of a certain age was really fortunate to have Flavor Flav, right? A joker on stage who puts the whole thing in perspective, actually has skills, but is bringing humor to the party. That's Jake Paul, right? I need for boxing people to understand that this is really a guy in the tradition of Flavor Flav, in boxing, Jorge Pius, a fighter who had skills, who always came in acting like a clown, acting like a joker. Until, of course, the laughter stopped in the second and third round as he beat the daylights out of your fighter. Right? Ali, same type thing. He's joking around. He, you know, he's promoting the fight. He's cracking jokes with Howard Cosell. Then the fight starts. Ali gets up on the balls of his toes. And he's beating guys he should have lost to like George Foreman, right? Today, we have a joker who holds part of the heavyweight belt. He's the lineal, Tyson Fury, right? You see Tyson Fury, he's giving interviews, he's joking, he makes it sound like he's just a joker and stuff like that, until, of course, you're Deontay Wilder and you're hitting the canvas multiple times in a must-win fight. Well, what I want people to do is to look at this Jake Paul, Tyron Woodley rematch. Folks, it is a very competitive fight. As I like to say, knockouts cause amnesia. Look past the outcome. This is a very competitive fight. Dare I say that Tyron Woodley, in my opinion, presented the most competitive fight that Jake Paul has had, right? Woodley comes out like Anthony Yard, came out against Lyndon Arthur, and Woodley is determined to get inside. There's a lot of wrestling, right? Folks, understand, after two bouts with Tyron Woodley, Jake Paul now knows how to handle a guy who wants to come inside and who's wrestling with him. Future opponents, Take note. Well, let me just say this. And keep in mind, Woodley's a guy who dropped, in my opinion, Jake Paul in their first fight. The referee missed it. The ropes are the only thing that held Jake Paul up. In other words, Woodley was a rough and tumble opponent. But people need to understand that Jake Paul has skills. Right? You look at fighters and you say, okay, he's an accumulation puncher, you know, wow, he has a pretty good quick, you know, right hand when an opponent's tired and stuff like that. Very few guys in the sport have A-level punches where an opponent could be completely awake, but yet can be taken out off, not two, but one shot. Folks, Jake Paul has an A-level right hand. It is A-level. This fight should make many people afraid. And I mean very afraid. I'm talking about the fighters who want to actually win fights, not just get paydays. Jake Paul in this fight starts throwing that right hand straight. He tells you this in a post-fight interview. He started throwing that right hand straight. And of course, like the greats, like a Lennox Lewis, 
as his hand is getting blocked, he's noticing that as Woodley blocks the punch, Paul is noticing that he could, if he could loop the punch, he could get around it, right? Get around Woodley's defense. So you know the rest. Jake Paul then throws a looped right hand. Folks, it lands. Jake Paul, with that punch, only has to be right once in a fight. He was right on that punch. Tyron Woodley is out before he hits the canvas. The referee doesn't even bother with the count. Understand, no one from Woodley's corner bothers with a dispute. We all knew what the ref saw immediately, that this fight was over. Folks, the guy who Jake Paul was thinking of fighting, Tommy Fury, who many of you here online have said to me, hey, Tommy Fury's a real fighter. Tommy Fury's unbeaten. Tommy Fury has more than a handful of wins. Right, folks, Tommy Fury would be roadkill for Jake Paul. Tommy Fury doesn't have an A-level punch. Right, what's Tommy Fury going to do? Get on the inside? Hasn't Tyron Woodley already tried that in two fights against Jake Paul? Understand, Jake Paul's not fighting four-round fights. He's fighting eight-round fights. That gives him eight rounds to catch you with a punch that can put you to sleep the minute he lands it. How many rounds did Nate Robinson go? Two? Folks, what makes his punch scary is unlike Deontay Wilder, who has an A-plus straight right hand, is Jake Paul actually has an A-level straight right hand and an A-level right hook. Go back and revisit the Anissa Gibb tape. Right, this is a guy who has first-round stoppages. Askren, how long did he last? Right, so understand, right now he's calling out a bunch of UFC fighters. Right, folks, most of them don't have a chance. Because, of course, Woodley has a right hand. Woodley has a very good right hand. Some of these UFC fighters, they're great in UFC, but they don't have the A-level punch. Right? Jake Paul has been in the boxing game. These UFC fighters haven't been in the boxing game. They've been in the MMA game. So Jake Paul is going to have an experience gap. If I were matchmaking for Jake Paul, the guy I would target, and his dance card's already full because he's about to fight Chad Dawson, is Victor Belfort. Right now, look, I know the boxing public disagrees with me. I believe that's my opportunity to make profits. I thought, and you can start shaking your head no, I thought the Evander Holyfield fight was stopped prematurely. Right? Holyfield came out. Okay, Holyfield started slow. I'm not here to say otherwise. Right? Holyfield did get caught with a big punch. I'm not here to say otherwise. But folks, watch the end of the fight. Holyfield's protecting himself to the point where he's actually coming forward while he's protecting himself. That's vintage of Anda Holyfield. Right? I believe people got afraid because of the age. I don't believe Holyfield's washed up. Quite frankly, I don't even believe Holyfield would have lost to Victor Belfort if that fight had gone a few rounds. We didn't allow it to because we obviously know better than doctors. Right? We obviously have reached a conclusion that no matter what shape a guy comes in in his late 50s, if we saw him fight in his 20s, in the Olympics, in his 30s, uh, we're just going to reach a conclusion that the guy's too old. 
right? But yet, of course, the same boxing public thinks that Mike Tyson is still in his prime. Or isn't that removed from his prime? Even though, let's face it, Tyson looked a hell of a lot worse than Holyfield did at the end of his real career, right? You remember that Kevin McBride fight. So I believe Victor Belford, who's about to fight Chad Dawson, and I don't know which Chad Dawson is going to show up because it's been a few years, right? And Dawson isn't the puncher that Holyfield can be. Right? Or that Jake Paul is. I'd love to see Jake Paul against Victor Belfort. I think that's a competitive fight. Why, why fool around with smaller UFC fighters? Understand, Belfort was known in the UFC for having a big punch. That's an easy sell to the boxing public because we just saw him knock down Evander Holyfield. Right? I, quite frankly, don't believe that a non-boxer without a big punch has a chance against Jake Paul. I believe the public's been hoodwinked because Jake Paul has much more skills than the Tommy Furies of the world who we're talking about him fighting against. The next time someone wants to mention Tommy Fury here in a comment, to a video that I make, please tell us the best fighter Tommy Fury has faced. Tell us why Tommy Fury is fighting guys with terrible, let me underline that word, terrible records. Right? Jake Paul, by the way, in his limited boxing career, just a few fights, would have the best record against Tommy Fury of any of the guys Tommy Fury has faced. Right? Jake Paul is real, folks. He has a real corner. It's obvious from what he's doing that this is not a dilettante. This is a guy actually measuring an opponent. Right? He throws straight right hands. He sees you have them blocked. Right? So then, of course, he plans it. He plans it waits for the right moment, then comes in with the right hand with the loop on it. Good night, Irene. Right? I don't care how crazy the guy seems before a fight. Just like you weren't fooled when Tyson Fury comes in in a king's outfit and you know, he obviously is, you know, trying to look cartoonish and stuff like that. You knew before the Deontay Wilder rematch that Tyson Fury was the better fighter. Right? There's a fight. I think it's a thrill in Manila where they have a trophy in the middle of the ring. And the ring announcer says, hey, here's the trophy the winner's going to get. Then Ali walks over there and grabs the trophy. And goes over to his corner with it. Everyone's laughing. Right, folks, Joe Fraser's not laughing. Fraser knew who he was fighting. Right, figure out Jake Paul. If they're going to insult us by having Jake Paul in the ring with a Tommy Fury, understand that's easy money. Right, I don't care who Tommy's related to. This isn't family feud. Right? The fact that Tommy's related to Tyson Fury means absolutely nothing. Boxing's a one-on-one -on -one sport. Right? I'll agree. If Tyson Fury's able to hop in the ring and Yui Fury's able to top in the ring, okay, then, then, then even I would bet on Tommy in that situation. They can't. Right? The family's outside the ring. Tommy Fury can't beat this guy, Jake Paul. Right? Understand, most of these UFC guys... They can't beat Jake Paul. Right after this fight, Tyron Woodley, who firmly believes he won the first fight, who knows he got the knockdown in the first fight, acknowledged that he lost the second fight. Had a lot more respect for Jake Paul. Right before the fight, the tattoo's on his middle finger. Right after this fight, you know, Woodley understands. I just lost to a real puncher. 
right? A real puncher. One who had me out cold. One who has me not even sure what happened that last round. That's who Jake Paul is, right? Jake Paul, at this stage of his career, needs to start fighting real fighters. I'm not talking about Tommy Fury. I'm talking about guys who've actually beaten real boxers, right? Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't have him hop in the ring with Maris Breedis in his next fight. But let's just say at this point, he should think about fighting top 20 fighters. If he wants to stay in the celebrity zone, then he needs to stop calling out these smaller UFC guys, guys who don't have the big punch. And he needs to start calling out Victor Belfort. If he's really brave, and this is my suggestion, and I think he loses this fight, call out Evander Holofield. Right? Show us how you would do against a Hall of Famer that people feel has faded, is too old, can't beat a Victor Belfort. Right? Jump up. Have us looking back to 10 years ago, 20 years ago in the heavyweight division. Have fans start to clamor if you could beat Holofield. For fights against Roy Jones, who fought Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, right? By the way, I think Jake Paul loses those fights, right? I'm not here to say he beats either Holofield, Jones, or Tyson, right? But you need to realize that those are the guys he needs to be in the ring against, not NFL running backs, right? I know one was trying to call out Tyron Woodley after the fight. Jake Paul magnanimously said, hey, why don't you have that fight on the undercard of my next event, right? Understand, Jake Paul at this stage is making fight cards. He has credibility with the fans, right? Few in the sport have his one-punch KO capability. Right? Obviously, some do. I'd rather get hit by Jake Paul than Anthony Joshua or Deontay Wilder. Right? Obviously, you have some big hitters in the sport. But just to understand, this YouTuber is one of them. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Also, some people have some conspiracy theory going, right? Now, keep in mind, I do crime videos here online <laughs> where I sometimes talk about conspiracies, right? That JFK assassination? No, I don't believe the official story, right? But some of you have conspiracy theories where you believe, and you've said so in the comment section, that these Jake Paul fights are rigged. Did you see Tyron Woodley hit the canvas? If you're going to rig a fight, can't you do it where a guy doesn't get knocked unconscious before hitting the deck? I don't buy the conspiracy theories. I think Jake Paul, the problem child, the guy who has the persona, who looks like he's clowning before a fight, right? Just like Jorge Pius, is a serious character. Right? Look past the persona and look at the right hand. Folks, he takes out a Neeson Gibb with a right hook. Here he loops the punch, takes out Tyron Woodley. In their second fight, Woodley had seen the straight right for one full fight already. Woodley's well into the second fight. He's seen the straight right. He knows the angle. Jake Paul loops it. This is a real fighter. I don't care what his background is. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.